What is going on, you guys? Welcome to the Red Sea Podcast. This is your host, Christopher Zamora. Welcome to another episode. So today I want to start with the show called The Idol. If you guys have not seen the show, then I would probably not recommend it to you because supposedly that show is just... I don't even know how to say it, but it's just not as good as Euphoria, I guess. But I don't know. Um, Last episode, I just started breaking down the very first episode and just talking about all the controversy that was happening around that show. And I'll break down the second episode as well for this podcast. And probably I'll, I'll... start talking about something else but like first i wanted to speak to you about the idol episode two i to say on this episode the very first half of it it was really good but then it just started shifting elsewhere around the last 10 or 15 minutes of the show it just wasn't correlating with what was happening with this episode so let's start in the beginning of this episode well jocelyn she told her team that she wanted to change the song on her label right the newest song that she is about to put out she says she recorded a new performance on it but like it just did not fit it really wasn't as good as the original uh sound for that song you know and even the the people around her they were agreeing at first that yeah okay this sounds good but there was this other lady i don't know her name but it's the lady with the glasses if you've seen the show then yes you know she told her straight up that this doesn't sound well this is not good you should change it back to the original jocelyn thought that this was her choice that she was the one in charge but no for for this once i think she was right the lady with the glasses the song it just wasn't really hitting well and i, I think it was good that they actually kept it like that but going forward on this episode, I think the the best part was probably when they were recording the music video for the song that she was making. Around this time with Jocelyn, at first she wasn't really feeling the the song and she was messing up badly on her moves, on her dance moves. But then she later found her rhythm and she really thought that she actually had this one part. That she actually had all the dance moves right she thought that she was ready she was but the thing is while this was happening when they were recording the camera it kind of blurred out what they were recording and that's what really messed jocelyn up on this episode like you kind of do feel bad for this girl because She's in a world where she's a pop star and it's just a really hard life because your life is always moving forward and like you're always doing stuff. She gave it her all in this one take, but the thing is that the camera wasn't recording what she was doing and that's what really messed her up. Like she started breaking down. Even her feet, like it was bleeding. It's crazy it's just it's just a crazy lifestyle that she's living and you know the messed up part is the lady with the glasses she noticed her friend jocelyn i think her name is diane i believe she noticed that she was probably the only one in the group that was dancing very well and like she stood out from the crowd and then she told one of her people that is with her does she actually sing? 
she's already looking for somebody else to replace Jocelyn, which is kind of messed up, man. <sighs> and also the the sad part is that Jocelyn's mother did die. But I think they did mention that she died of cancer in the very first episode. But like you do kind of feel bad for her because she started calling out her name on this episode when she was recording. Her mother was the one that was always keeping her on track. And like everybody else around her, it just seems like they just want her to succeed very badly because they need this job. They need to help her because they want to keep their job. And that's that's just kind of messed up because maybe you actually can see that in Hollywood today. And I think that's what Sam Livingston was going for in this episode. Like he wants to tell a story about a pop star and how the people around her, they want her to succeed. They want her to succeed very badly. But the thing is, they're just shady people around them. And yeah, I do believe that's what he was going for. But then uh, on the last half of this episode, once the weekend's character came in, Tedros, Tedros. Yeah, that's his last name as well. Tedros. Um, I don't know what to say. It just did not make sense how they were portraying him as this guy that was supposed to save her. I think probably that's what they're going for, but like the nude scenes, I don't think it didn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't make sense because well, I don't know why would Jocelyn be on that state since she was already feeling very bad and she was very down. Or maybe that's what they were going for as well. Maybe Tedros is just manipulating her. And just trying to get her to sign with him. Oh yeah, and by the way, we actually did learn that he's a manager. He's not only a nightclub owner, but he's also a manager. He has signed three people with him. He has the the, the black man with blonde hair. Also, the her friend, Diane, she is a part of that group as well. And there's also another girl named Chloe. She's a good singer. But yeah, that's I didn't see that coming because Diane supposedly is supposed to be Jocelyn's best friend or her second best friend. Her very first friend is probably her assistant, the one that always stays in the house. Yeah, I did not see that coming that the weekend's character Tedros, he's a manager to them. And now he's going to try to sign a Jocelyn on the next episode. And that's what we actually do see for the next episode. He's going to move in into her house, supposedly. And oof, things are going to start heating up. But yeah, for this episode, I have to give this maybe a 6.5 out of 10. I don't know. Overall, I give this show maybe a 7. A 7, a solid 7 out of 10. I don't know. It just did not make sense how they went with the ending for this episode. Like the first half, like I said before, it was great. Just the last 10 minutes, it really wasn't. And maybe this is why that the viewership has actually gone down for this show for the very first episode they had about 905,000 viewers and then for the second episode it went down guys it went down to 810,000 viewers that is bad because people actually did lose interest in the very first episode and maybe there is talks that there's not going to be another season. I saw something like that on the internet, but I don't really know if it's true or not. I doubt it because sometimes I do get fed some BS on Twitter. And 
sometimes I had to do my research, but no, that's not true because on the website I clicked on the link that it sent me, but it's just a a gossip website, like it's not really a reliable source. As of right now, I, I don't know if they're gonna cancel the show or not. As for what I seen from the idol, maybe there is just going to be one season. But we'll see, man. They're losing the viewers. I don't know how they're going to do for the third episode. If they actually go down again in viewership, oof, I don't know, man. Probably they could be in danger of losing the show. But we will see, man. We will see how how they're going to do for the next episode. Just wish them well, but... Eesh, so far, it's just not doing so good. But we'll see. And now let's switch gears, guys. I want to speak to you about the Teofimo Lopez versus Josh Taylor fight. In this fight, I was going for Teofimo Lopez for the win. And he got it done. He got the win against Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor seemed like... He was a very great fighter. And like he was prepared. And I believe he was. But like Teofimo. He was just. Got the better of him. All that trash talk he did. Against Josh Taylor. It just paid out for him. It worked. Because in the very first. Uh, I'll say four rounds. Josh Taylor actually got the first round. But then Teofimo got the next three. I had to say that probably Josh Taylor, he might have just uh, won at least three or four rounds throughout this whole fight, to be honest. Yeah, I I really thought that it was going to be a very competitive fight. But... Teofimo Lopez kind of made Josh Taylor look average. That's the crazy part because he was just that good. And I don't know, maybe it could have been because Josh Taylor might not have fought in for at least 16 months or so. I believe that's what I, I caught what the commentators were saying about him, that he hasn't fought for at least 16 months. And Teofimo... His last fight, I think it was around six months ago. So, yeah, I think that probably could have been the main issue for Josh Taylor. He had ring rust, and probably he didn't know how to counter against Teofimo. And, yeah, man, he won the champion. He won the champion on another division. At first, he won the champion on the lightweight division. Now on, on a new division. So now he's a two-time division champ. That's good, man. He's just barely 25 years old. That that's great. But but now the crazy part is, is that supposedly he has now retired. You want proof? Well, he has actually vacated his belt. The one he just recently won. Against Josh Taylor. Yeah. He just vacated it. He no longer. Wants it. He no longer wants. To be the main guy. I thought like. Maybe he wants to fight. Devin Haney. Once he comes into his division. But no man. I saw one of his interviews online. And he did mention that. He feels. Tired. And he feels like. He's not getting paid enough. To actually fight. Don't get me wrong, he still wants to be a part of the boxing community. Like, he wants to be a commentator or a coach. But, like, fighting itself, he feels like, maybe I could do something else. And, yeah, I thought that he was going to continue box a little bit more. Like, at least three more years against these top guys. Well, I don't know, man. Maybe he can't come back. But, like, as of right now... He has vacated his belt. And we will see what's going to happen with him. 
And as of right now, we still don't know when Tyson Fury is going to fight. It's been a while, man. It's been such a long time that hey, we don't know when this guy is actually going to fight again. The last fight he had, it was against Derek Chisora. That fight was never supposed to happen. They fought a trilogy fight. And Tyson, he won all three fights. A trilogy fight only is supposed to take place if you're tied with one another. That's like the only way, man. It just didn't make sense. Why would they be a trilogy fight for them? So far, there was there's no news about Deontay Wilder, no Andrew Reese, not nothing much. There was talks about Anthony Joshua fighting Dillian White, but nothing has really has happened. Yeah, we're just still waiting for the heavyweights to fight each other in boxing, but nothing is happening right now. Everything is just so quiet and. The heavyweight division in boxing. Man, they really are avoiding each other, I guess. Tyson, man, he needs to fight Alexander Usyk. But will we ever get that? At this point, I don't even know, man. Don't hold your breath for that fight. Oh, and guess what, guys? I have actually started watching Fear the Walking Dead. I just recently started it. Before I started this episode, I watched episode 2 of season 1. Before I have seen it, like in 2016, that's when I started watching it. But then I actually stopped because I was busy and maybe I was watching a different show as well. But now I'm actually seeing this show. (laughs) Finally. I had to say, the very first two episodes, they're pretty good. You know, the the crazy part is, they actually kept the same number of episodes for the first season. Like how The Walking Dead had six episodes. They did the same thing for Fear the Walking Dead. The Dead City one that's coming out very soon, this upcoming Sunday. Well, for you guys, the first episode will be already out. It's the one with Negan and Maggie. They're going to New York City. Maybe on this season, they're going to have six episodes as well. (laughs) They're going to continue probably the same thing for the other shows that are coming out as well. The Daryl one, the Rick one, and this one, the Dead City one. We'll see, man. This franchise is just so great, man. Now they're expanding it even more. You know, I think they're expanding it more because, one, well, they have a lot more story to tell. But the main reason I believe why they're doing this is because of the popularity of the MCU. That opened a lot of doors for everybody. Not just only the main Avengers heroes, but like for every single hero that is in marvel that universe has expanded so much ever since the very first iron man movie the one that came out i believe in 2008 and that's what they're planning to do as well with the walking dead they're going to expand the universe even more and i like it man i like it hopefully one day man I can be in a Walking Dead show. That's like one of my dreams, man. One of my dreams to be a part of a universe like this. I always wanted to be in a zombie TV show. As long as they're still making zombie shows, maybe I'll have the chance to one day. But we will see, man. We'll see how they're going to continue on with the story. And it looks promising that... They're going to continue creating more of The Walking Dead. But will they ever go stale again? We will find out very soon. Once the very first episode comes out 
for The Walking Dead, that city. Fear of the Walking Dead is about to end, to be honest. They're already on the last season, and they have made eight seasons. Damn, I, I didn't even know that, because I stopped watching around season two. I haven't caught up with the show for a while. But now, since I'm watching the show, I'm going to finish it. And we'll see. I'll give you guys my critique for that show. For The Walking Dead, I have to give it a 9 out of 10. But for Fear of the Walking Dead, we'll see. I will let you know once I actually finish the whole thing. But as of right now, I'm on episode 2 of Fear of the Walking Dead. And I had to keep watching it. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, that is it for this podcast. Hey, thank you so much for listening. If you did made it this far, guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I do have a channel for this podcast, which is the Radio C podcast. And if you're listening to it on Spotify or Pandora, make sure to follow it on wherever it is you're listening to it. Recommend it to a neighbor or a friend that likes hearing stuff about combat sports, horror things, or anything in pop culture related. Maybe they will enjoy it as much as you do. Oh yeah, and by the way guys, before I leave, I have to say, next week, I will be going to Guatemala and and I don't know how I'm going to record the podcast, but... The setting is going to look a little bit different. I'm going on vacation. So maybe uh, I will record one podcast when I'm over there. Stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned. Follow the channel and you'll be able to see where I am at. Like You'll be able to visually see (laughs) where I will be. So yeah, go follow the channel, the YouTube channel. And... I'll see you guys next week, hopefully, if I make another podcast. Just stay tuned. Just turn on those notifications for the YouTube channel. And you guys will see that we'll be in a different area that is not here in my room. So, yeah, guys, follow the podcast. i see you guys on the next one. Take care and live to the fullest. Bye.